people. Well, I'm on I-90 East, heading right into Chicago. Just giving you a look at it. The downtown area there off to the left. I normally would not come this way on I-90, but my directions to get to this shipper say to take a certain exit. I'm not talking about my GPS. I'm talking about the notes in the system from Maverick. Tell me to take an exit off of I-90. So I, instead of going around on 80 and you know, avoid some of the downtown traffic. I just decided to go ahead and take 90 all the way and it make for an easier switch following the directions. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't had to come through Chicago on I-90 in quite a while. But here comes your pretty good look at some of the skyscrapers. from the shipper well folks I didn't want to miss a chance to show you this bridge kind of on the south side of Chicago now still on 90 east off to my left I can see is that Lake Michigan so we're gonna be making the turn around the the tip of Lake Michigan. I think that's Lake Michigan. I apologize if it's a different Great Lake. <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, yeah. You can see it off to the left there now, I think, in the camera. wanted to show you that. Well guys, whoo, I followed my uh, notes, instruction notes that came with this order and I can see my customer over here to the right, Olympic Steel. If I can figure out how to get into their property, <laughs> this has been kind of a worrisome trek back into here. I hope this is the road that will get me into Olympic Steel. I'm not really even sure of that. But that truck down there in front of me is turning right, so that's a good sign. Oh man, it's hectic back in here. There's all kinds of warnings about low clearance bridges that were lower than 13 feet <laughs> railroad tracks everywhere the GPS both GPS has finally gave up on me said there was no safe route <laughs> oh man but I'm glad I followed the notes to get in here because otherwise I would just be going cuckoo with the GPS 
So I think I'll be taking a right down here by these blue buildings, hopefully. Oh, I got like a cement truck behind me. Woo! All right, well, looks like this might be the entrance. There's a sign, Olympic Steel. Wow. Good Lord. Now I gotta just figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> Good Lord. All right, let me check in. All right, guys. Well, there's another driver back there that told me to come to this end of the building and just pull in. So let's try that. There's a couple of other trucks already in line up here waiting to get loaded. And this is the end where you get sheet steel, that other driver said. I sure hope so. So I'm going to just try to get up here close to the side wall as I can get. Man, what a confusing place to get to. Woo! Gotta check the system for uh, instructional notes. I'd have been messed up if I hadn't have followed them. Getting in here, that's for sure. Okay, I guess I'll just uh, wait here until a loader comes to check me in. Okay guys, I'm getting loaded. This is Larry here, my friendly loader. He says I'm getting two stacks, two similar stacks of this sheet steel. That's the front stack. And then we'll have another stack back here. And then I have to pull around front to uh, secure and tarp. So what I'll have to do here is put a cross chain in the front and then I'll put a one cross chain in the back and then two. Oh, so there's two more to go on this stack. Okay. Hmm. I might feed. I'm probably going to feed a couple of straps through here like as gut straps. Then I'll do that while he's getting some more all right okay guys let me show you the securement on this before i have to tarp it okay i got a cross chain in the front using padded edge protectors on the bottom skid mats on the top two chains over the top and then i got two gut straps over the fourth row same thing back here two chains over the top Two gut straps over the fourth row and then I got one cross chain in the back so let me show you from this side and what I'm gonna do is throw two canvas tarps over and I should be able to get it with one of my four foot vinyl tarps hopefully all right so that's what we got. Pretty time consuming securement if you do it right. Most guys just throw some straps over the top and hit the road. But this is how Maverick has us do it. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thursday morning. I'm on 255 South, trying to get around St. Louis. 
I usually don't go this way, but I did today. You know, I came in on 70 West, and I usually just go straight through town. But seeing as how it's, uh, you know, the morning rush hour, I decided to go this way. And uh, showing you this bridge going over the Mississippi River. Going from Illinois to Missouri. And I just got a message over the tablet. I'll play it for you. I don't know if you were able to hear that, but that was someone named Sue. I don't know if she's filling in for a fleet manager or an ALM or what, but she's directed me that after I get this load delivered, just to head to Fort Smith for my next load, which is kind of what I was expecting. Um, because I'm delivering to Monet, Missouri. But it's nice that they went ahead and told me that, so I kind of know what's on the schedule for later. Man, it really cooled off overnight. I mean, the temperature has dropped like 15 to 20 degrees for the highs today. I guess this is the first day of fall. Anyway, I'll see you on down the road. Okay, guys. I'm in Manette, Missouri. And according to my directions, I'm supposed to turn right here. Then turn left. Okay. Well, let's see. Where am I supposed to turn left? It looks like maybe down here at the next entrance. Okay, let me get over here. Well, my company GPS is telling me to turn in left here. And uh, as you can hear, the system is arriving me. trying to get the attention to one of these forklift drivers over here. Let me get back to you. Okay, I finally got the attention to the forklift driver over here. Told him I was carrying sheet steel. He said to turn in here and just kind of go down here straight about midway. Well, see, my GPS was telling me to hook a sharp left right here, which I didn't think that looked very feasible. <laughs> so, I'm gonna, I mean, I do see sheet steel right down here to the right. So I guess I'll just uh, stop here for now so I don't clog up the whole shebang here. And because uh, I got a truck coming in behind me. All right, more later. So check out the unload, guys. Notice how his rear end is floating. <laughs> oh, 
boy. So, I'm partially unloaded. He's got the top two layers, you know, above the straps off. I gotta get my straps out of the way. I've just been yanking stuff off of here to get it out of the way so he can start unloading, but he's having a hard time. Oh boy. Like a carnival ride. All right, more later. Well, guys, they sure don't give you much of a path to get out of here. Pardon? Oh, yeah. Thank you. He was asking, could I get by that little load he was picking up? <laughs> now I've made it so far. Golly. This place was not at all what I uh, had envisioned. You know, the name of it was, uh, let me look at that for a minute. Miracle Recreation. So I thought it was some sort of a like maybe an RV place or something like that. But man, this is just a big distribution hub for all kinds of junk. Okay, so I've got a deadhead to Fort Smith. I'm gonna stop at the pilot in Springdale on the way because I'm kind of low on fuel and we are 70 miles from there so let's let's see if I can make it <laughs>